my uh, my wife at the time had had um, developed a brain tumor, and uh, naturally was was you know unhealthy for for quite some time, um, doing some uh, chemotherapy and uh, and uh, radiation, and um, the that's probably where the I don't want to say you know the feud between the family started the beginning of the end, if you will. Kevin uh, Pound had a great relationship with his wife Allison, but he found himself unable to fully assimilate into the family. Me and my ex-wife had, had a great relationship. I mean, we we're we we're really friends before anything. I mean, um, always had fun together. We had known each other for a long time um, before we got married. Um, lived together for two years before we got married. So. The relationship that I had with my ex-wife, really, and, and the tragedy of this whole thing is really that's not the issue. You know, it was it was the, the two families. I mean, we we're the Hatfield McCoys. The disagreement began in the class difference of Kevin's family and that of his wife. His wife's family was wealthy, and Kevin's was not. He felt that they were entitled, arrogant. They were unwilling to accept who he was and his position in the world. Kevin's successes were overlooked and discredited by his wife's parents. So when, you know, I would get, you know, very uh, excited over buying like a Toyota, you know, um, they, they didn't really understand that. But before she got sick, it was, it was copacetic. It was, you know, mind your own business. You know, kind of but then deal. his wife fell ill. Um, that was really kind of the writing on the wall of, of what was what was to come. Welcome to Predo on Air. Once again, I am Caleb Suttles, the host of the show. Predo is a collection of short, shareable stories. Each show is dedicated to a pre-visionary, that is, someone who is revisiting their past and sharing their revisions, the things in their past they would change, the things they know now that they wish they would have known then, whenever then is. These vignettes are meant to share, so if this story connects with you, share it with your friends and consider sharing your own here on air. And be sure to visit our recently launched website, predoonair.com, designed and managed by the lovely and talented Rodrigo Escalante. Kevin worked in the food industry, and when the medical bills began to flood in, his income was no longer enough to support his family. Understanding this, his in-laws offered him a position at their insurance company. When I left the restaurant business and uh, and went to work for them, which is uh, clearly the worst decision of my life, um, and, um, and and let them you know grab a hold of me because now you know not only did they have the influence that they had on the family side of things, now they held my livelihood. This happened in two thousand nine two years after the decline of his relationship with his in-laws. And he was reluctant to accept the offer, but did anyway. 2007 was the beginning of the end. 2009, going to work for them in July 2009, really kind of pushed it into, into motion. You know, because then it was a daily, you know, a daily grind. After a scuffle in which... Allison's parents accused Kevin of gambling away $50,000. Kevin gave his wife an ultimatum, a choice to maintain her relationship with her parents or with him. She's going to either have to pick that family or me. At that time, her and her mother were going on a trip to Las Vegas for four days. Now, I'm not a dumb person, but I have a good idea of what happened on that on that uh, trip. Um, my side of it would be that her mother coerced, coerced her into getting rid of me. Um, when she returned, um, we started talking about um, divorce. And, and if it would 
would have just ended there, that would have been that would have been the easy part. And they just said, hey, you go that way, and you go that way. And, you know, you get to see your kids on these days, and you get to see your kids on these days, and split the money, split the house, split the cars, and it's done. That would have been the easy part. But that's when all hell started breaking loose. So I'll stop you there. Um, before before the trip, so she had, you know, your wife at the time had kind of, um, had she been on your side or had she not really recognized that there was kind of this battle brewing? She, well, she heard my, she didn't take sides because it was very difficult for her. On one side, she's got her husband and on another side, she's got her parents. Um, I, I mean, she definitely hurt my side because I'd come home and, and, and be, you know, you know, I, did, I didn't bite my tongue around her, you know, because I'm not going to come home to my house and feel like I, I got to shut up, you know. Right. Um, so she didn't really take sides. She was a very passive person to begin with, a um, very unconfrontational person to begin with. And I'm the, you know, the old term opposite to track. I'm the exact, exact opposite to where if I'm, I'm angry and I'm passionate or, or I'm, I'm, you know, um, uppity about something, you're, you know I wear my emotions on my sleeve. Right. So it, it really, she didn't really take sides to that point um, when, in, until she got back from Vegas. Was she better? And that, that's when. Was she better at that point in terms of her health? Yes, yeah, she had had, she had beaten it, but she, she, for the rest of her life, she'll have ongoing rep, like, she had, um, she had a brain tumor, um, she also had a stroke because of the radiation dream, as a radiation-induced stroke, but it wasn't like a stroke that takes out half your body, it was a stroke where, you know, hey, I can't remember what I have for breakfast, right. but that goes away, you know, um, she'll be on, she, she'll be on some sort of medication for the rest of her life. Um, she has to do an MRI for the rest of her life. She has a problem with seizures. Um, she's not epileptic, epileptic or anything, but she has uh, problems with seizures because of the medication that she takes. She takes an anti-seizure medication she'll have to take for the rest of her life. So it's not like it can't come back or anything like that. There is a concern there, but as it sits right now, yeah, she's healthy. Uh-huh. From here, Kevin described a series of encounters he had with his in-laws. Once, when he dropped his kids off to school, only to be greeted by his screaming mother-in-law, and another when she approached Kevin's mom at a school Christmas program. They also used their position as Kevin's employer to tarnish his reputation with business colleagues. Um, things of that nature. I, I was immediately the monster, and I had absolutely had it. So what happened? So, really what we're looking at is my attorney came back. A long court battle, endless mediation sessions, and eventually an agreement was made. And I really had to, had, to, had to fight, you know, to be able to see, you know, my children as much as I do now, which is, in my opinion, not enough. Right. You know, but as divorced families go, it's fair. Um, pretty much all debt was in my name because my wife's credit was, was, uh, horrible and mine was, was damn near perfect. Um, so all the creditors of everything that shut off that she didn't pay or whatever, um, you know, came upon me. In the aftermath, he has written a book and launched a foundation to teach other men in his position how to navigate the turbulence of a messy divorce. And I want to make dang sure that nothing like this happens to anybody else what were what were some of the like overarching kind of life lessons that you learned um really learned that a goal in life shouldn't have a price tag on it you know a goal in life should you should do what you're passionate about you should do what makes you happy because believe me you if you get through the day and at the end of the day you're happy you're doing the right thing you know if you come home from work 
and you're not, and, and you're like, man, my job sucks, and my life sucks, and and you know what? I got to do it all again tomorrow. You know, what kind of a life is that? You're not going to die because you never really lived. You know, I mean, people ask me all the time. I'll, I'll be a speed engagement. A kid come up to me, 17 years old. He's with his dad. He's divorced. He's like, hey. You talked about college when you were in college. What should I major in? Major in something that you're passionate about. You like to write? Major in journalism. You know? You want to go to film school? Let well, go. You know? I mean, uh, you want to you be on the radio? Be on the radio. I, I thought this was interesting. I had not coached him on an answer, and I don't think that he had listened to the show before. And yet his answer was so similar to the lessons others I have interviewed on the show had learned. So similar, in fact, I wasn't sure exactly how it related to his story. Film school, radio, and a messy divorce? Until he said this. No one's going to make you happy. People think that, uh, people think that, you know, I'm going to get this person, I'm going to fall in love, and I'm going to be happy. You know? No, no, no. You want to be happy, make yourself happy. You know, you want, you want to, uh, yes, a life plus I learned, you want to be something, you can be whatever you want to be, you just got to get up. Right. You know? Life's going to knock you down. It's not about how many times you get knocked down. It's about how you get up and in what, which manner you get up in. Do I, am I going to get up? And life definitely knocked me down. I spent a year on my couch. A year. Feeling sorry for myself. You know, and then I decided, do you know what? This is BS. I'm not going to do this any longer. I get up at 5.30 in the morning every morning. I get up at about 1. Maybe at 5.30 in the morning every morning. You know, and, and I'm, I'm pushing 40 years old. I'm 38 years old. <laughs> and and I get up on the days that I get my kids, that, that, that's awesome. You know, but on the days that I don't have my kids, you know, I could be doing something, you know, at work, at, uh, you know, through my speed engagements, when I'm writing, you know, things of that nature that can benefit the lives of others, which benefit the lives of my children. Right. So... Um, those are kind of the biggest things that I learned. Kevin's story ends just where it began. With a realization that love cannot be bought and that money is not the measure of one's happiness. He reiterated this throughout the interview. Money does not buy class. The worth of things is greater than the cost of things. If you or anyone you know is interested in sharing your story on air, email me at predoonair at gmail.com. Please share this episode with your friends, visit us at predoonair.com, and come back next week for the next revision.